The everything bubble is over. Where should you invest? So the everything bubble is over. Now, I've worked out that I've done over 17 videos just this year giving warnings about uh, stock market, property market, bond market, this asset bubble uh, being over and a potential crash coming. And, uh, you know, we don't give financial advice on this channel, but I certainly share with you guys what some of the best thinkers in, in, uh, in the world are thinking about. I share my opinion. Uh, I, sometimes I give update on my own portfolio. And, uh, and I've, I've shared for a long time now that I've been sitting on US dollars as a percentage of my portfolio. Uh, yep, heavily invested in the physical metals, gold and silver, got the miners, explorers, and commodity plays, energy plays. I've shared how I've sold out of some of my uh, energy plays and I'm waiting for another opportunity to buy back in because I do think I'm bullish this decade ahead. I think we're in a inflationary decade ahead and because of the ESG movement and the whole, you know what movement, uh, that's going to be bullish for uh, a lot of energy and other commodities and uh, other base metals and whatnot. But I have been taking profits off the table. I have been trimming my portfolio. I haven't, other than uh, Peabody uh, in late 2021, where I sold all of it. I don't own any Peabody shares at the moment. Pretty much everything else I still own. Yes, I've trimmed it down. Uh, some portfolios I've, I've sold over half my holdings, others less so. Uh, but I also have been sitting on a lot of US dollars. And this play looks like it's starting to come into fruition. In fact, my uh, OFX sent me a notification yesterday to say that uh, just to remind me that uh, the Aussie dollar's fallen below a level uh, to where I was going to pull the trigger on this trade. However, I'm going to hold off on that because I think it's going to play out very nicely uh, moving forward. And yeah, I've been building up a cash position. Why? Because I'm going to buy back in. I'm going to buy assets, good quality undervalued fundamental assets, real assets as they get cheaper. But uh, what I want to do now before I share with you guys some, some interesting information, I just want to cut to a clip um, with George Noble. Now, some of you may not know who George is. George is a very experienced investor and trader. He worked with Peter Lynch uh, all those years ago. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description below to the full video from Blockworks. Now, I always say this, I highly recommend watching it all. But for this one, I really highly recommend watching it all. In fact, this thing is just full of gold nuggets in this interview from start to finish. And in coming videos, I'm probably going to use a few clips from this video uh, in future videos to ram home some points of mine. So I really do recommend it. I'll put a link in the description below. But uh, with that, let's just cut to a clip with George Noble. What lesson are they going to learn, George? And it, what, what assets do you think they've been crowding into that are the most susceptible to drawdowns in today's environment? Well, uh, Jack, you had um, the brilliant Michael Howell on a couple of weeks ago. I've known Michael for over 30 years. He's one of the best in the business. And as he explained in your um, podcast, it's all about liquidity. And the central banks around the world are now in the process of withdrawing liquidity. And that's going to have a disparate impact on uh, various asset prices. So I think the, uh, we, we've had the everything bubble the last few years. Everything's been driven up. Stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, collectibles, baseball cards. It's the everything bubble. And now they realize that because inflation's a problem, they need to do something about it. And the way to do something about it is slow down the economy. The Fed's told you they want to slow down the economy. They've, they've told you they want to tighten financial conditions. Translated, they want the stock market to go down. Everyone always says, don't fight the Fed. You know, at the bottom, when, 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 they, when things look dire and the fundamentals look terrible, and the Fed starts pumping money into the system, 
people say, don't fight the Fed. Okay, well, don't fight the Fed. They're telling you this, they want the stock market to go down. We've had, um, as I said, irresponsible, reckless monetary policy. They kitchen sinked everything. You know, I understand why we had the pandemic. We had, you know, excessive monetary policy. You know, we, we had peak fiscal impulse, peak monetary impulse, peak valuations, peak bond prices, peak everything. And so that caused the economy to accelerate. It caused companies to overearn. Look at a historical chart of profit margins. And it caused valuations to surge to levels which are completely out of whack with history. And now it's all normalizing. And so the assets that are going to get hit hardest are the ones most sensitive to liquidity. So whether you're talking about, you know, the Kathy Wood Arc type stocks, stocks on 20, 30 times revenues, loss making companies, crypto, you know, SPACs, Merrill, all the speculative garbage, you know, NFTs. Now, now, they're, doing, now they're doing mortgages in, 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 in crypto land. Like, really? I mean, all that stuff, nada, no bueno, as they would say. So I think, you know, and that stuff's been getting killed. I suspect that's the stuff that will continue to get killed. And But now they're starting to get to the real stuff. So you look in the stock market motors recently, you've seen the general, so to speak, the FANG stocks, you know, be it you know, Amazon, you know, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. They're starting to get hit. So I think when the, the tide's going out and people say, what should I buy? What if the answer is you shouldn't buy anything? What if the answer is you should be in cash? Or what I really believe, because I look, no one knows where the market's going to go. It's just my opinion. You're seeing a huge rotation from you know long duration to short duration assets, from virtual to real, from crappy growth to quality value. I want to be careful how I say this to commodities. So what I really believe is that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So I, I've been, for instance, very bullish the last year. And you can go look at my Twitter feed. I suggested a year ago already, I'm on, I'm on the record with this, it was last summer saying people should short Kathy Wood, short ARC, and go long XOP as a proxy for energy. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it and take a victory lap. It's, it's all there. It's up 300%. I don't think that trade is over. So... I would run, not walk as fast as you can away from any liquidity-driven asset. And that's going to tend to mean, for the purposes of people watching this podcast, for investing in the stock market, high PE stocks, growth stocks, Kathy Wood type stocks. Are there comparable times when during the dot-com bubble, there were stocks that were even you know, more richly valued than 100 price of sales? Or is it, is it something completely different? Jack, that's a great question. You know, I've been through many booms and busts. I was there in 87. I left Fidelity to start a fund to short the Japanese market. So the Japanese market peaked at 39000 at the last day of 1989. Never seen that price since. I was there in 2000 for the tech wreck, NASDAQ 5000. I was there in 2008. And I will say what we've seen now eclipses every other bubble that I've lived through. Look, Scott McNeely, who is um, CEO of Sun Microsystems, uh, at the height of the dot-com mania around 2000, 2001, famously said, he went on this rant about what does it mean to buy a stock on 10 times sales and how crazy that is and explaining that if the company basically dividended you back every dollar of revenue, so forget about cost of goods sold and everything else, you'd only get the stock price back after 10 years. And remember, stocks should represent the added stream of cash flows in the future. That's 10 times sales. We're talking now about stocks. You mentioned Snowflake on 100 times sales. I'll be honest with you, Jack. I don't even know what they do, all right? But last time I looked, it's still on 50 times sales. And, you know, just do the math. Liars figure, but figures don't lie. You can't get from here to there. It doesn't work. Uh, there's a study, and I think I shared some of the materials with you, Jack, which shows, for instance, what happens to when you buy stocks on 20 times revenues in one of the slides I showed you. The data shows, and I have to credit my friends at Kalish Concepts, the average stock in history, if you pay 20 times revenues, forget about whether it underperformed the market. That stock had a 55% probability of being delisted. Delisted. Oh, but bro, the story is good. So ignore the charlatans, 
in the mainstream media, ignore the fast talking investment bankers. And so, you know, how many times have we seen this the last couple of years? And so to answer your question, no, NASDAQ 5000 in 2000 was never this bad. Yeah, Tokyo had some crazy stuff in 1989. But for my money, this is the biggest everything bubble I've ever seen in my career. So here's a chart of the S&P 500 and US money market net inflows. Uh, it's all about liquidity. And here, S&P 500 index and T-bonds shifted forward two years. Uh, it's all about liquidity. I've shared this chart before from uh, Jesse Felder, leverage speculation in equity. So we've got the S&P 500 index and 12-month change in Martin, margin debt. It's all about liquidity. So Dr. Michael Burry, uh, there's a couple of other tweets that I wanted to share with you guys. But as always, he's gone and deleted all these tweets. So this is the only one I saved. Uh, after 2000, the NASDAQ had 16 bear market rallies, greater than 10%, averaging 22.7% before bottoming down 78%. After 1929, the Dow had 10 bear market rallies, greater than 10%, averaging 22.8% before bottoming down 89%. And he's pretty much, and I shared another tweet in another video about him talking about uh, all the uh, stimmy checks that have, well, finished. And where is li the liquidity going to come from? And from Hoz, they say that every 90 years, humans repeat the same behavior. And here's two charts comparing uh, 1916 to 1929. 2000 to 2022 so uh i mean that's pretty uh that's pretty freaky when you look at that chart so i had to share that with you guys yeah we've had bubbles right throughout history uh nothing nothing is new under the sun a lot of people said to me uh you know a lot of friends steve you know why aren't you in crypto why aren't you in crypto why didn't you get bitcoin I've got a lot of friends who bought Bitcoin at 50,000, 60,000, uh, thinking that it's going to a million. Look where it is now. I didn't invest in it because I did enough study to, to see there's issues with exchanges, there's issues with Tether, and we're probably going to end up seeing exactly you know, what those issues are. It's not used as a medium of exchange and I prefer holding gold. Uh, gold's got a longer track record. Uh, yeah, but yeah, a lot of people got rich, but a lot of people go broke in these things too. A lot of people got rich trading tulips and a lot of people went bust. So you've got to be careful who you listen to. Even the so-called experts, the talking heads, the brokers, Here's an article from October 30, 1929. Brokers believe bottom is reached. Ouch. And even the so-called mainstream economists and the mainstream experts. Uh, be careful. Be careful what they say. John Maynard Keynes will not have any more crashes in our lifetime. Uh, other economists, uh, Fisher, I think, didn't he say that the, you know, the stock market has reached a, a permanent plateau? But the Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises warned that a great crash is coming. Now, I shared this chart in uh, the uh, Exeter's Pyramid, my last video. Uh, and what we're seeing is, you know, the derivatives, the bonds, the stocks, the, you know, everyone is selling. Uh, we're going to see margin debt just collapse margin calls left right and center and that's what i believe is is happening with the precious metals is people are selling to to meet margin calls and you know it's with crypto that the the margin calls there what i believe we're going to see though is a lot of these people who got burnt in crypto they're going to move across to gold and silver because they're educated on sound money they're educated on fiat currency they're edu educated on how our monetary system is a ponzi scheme and so i think a lot of those are going to move into the gold and silver sector which is fantastic um 
But a lot of people say to me, Steve, you know, the Fed is going to do a power pivot. And I was in that camp. I was in that camp. But just yesterday, uh, Biden was talking about inflation and then said, don't worry, Jay Powell's going to fix it for you. You know, Jay Powell, you know, that, that, that's their job. It, it is a political issue. Every time central banks have stepped in like this and, and, and you know, as soon as there's a bear market, a 20% fall or something, then central banks come in. Uh, they haven't had a CPI crisis. They haven't had an inflation crisis to deal with at the same time. So they could step in. There was no inflation crisis. There was no CPI crisis. Now we've got raging inflation. We've got a huge CPI crisis, which impacts everybody other than the rich. It, it impacts voters. It hurts voters. Have a look at what's happening around the world in, in, in uh, countries that are experiencing high inflation. There's social chaos. Social chaos. And so from a political, this is now political. And so I believe central banks are going to raise rates a lot higher than any of us expected. And it's going to happen a lot sooner than any of us expected. And like George said, uh, you know, this, this crash is likely to shock a lot of people. Uh, most, most young people will have never seen a crash like this. And a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of very smart people I respect think that can't happen. That central banks will just pump pump more in. That they'll do a power pivot. The more I've th- thought about this and looked back at all the other times that they've come in, they've come in to fight deflation. GFC, they come in, do QE. They're fighting deflation. The repo market, they're they're fighting. You know the the and that's the other thing is the only only way I see them coming back in now is if we have some bad credit issue where. Banks just stop uh, trading with each other. That that basically the the plumbing of the financial system just stops and seizes up. Um, and that that may well happen. So keep an eye on that. That's what I'm keeping an eye on to see whether at what point the Fed do step in. Uh, but until that point, I don't think they care now about the stock market. And uh, I think h- higher. Uh, interest rates are coming for that political reason. Go back and have a look at all the times that the Fed have stepped in. They've stepped in to stop either deflation or the monetary system seizing up. So whether you go back to uh, 87, long, long, well, 87 might be different, but long-term capital management uh, after, you know, and go back to the dot-com bubble. Have a look how far that fell. I, I actually think we're going to see a similar fall and some stocks are going to get wiped out just like just like the dot-com bubble. And what we're seeing at the moment, and this is that Exeter's pyramid, why well, I wanted to share this again, is we're seeing this scramble to uh, US dollars. And uh, Jim Rogers, uh, one of my favorite all-time investors, talked about it, that for some reason, and yeah, you can have a look at the euro dollar system and how credit is made, and then when companies and, and uh, whatever get in trouble, they need US dollars. Yes, I get that, but also people just scramble to it for safety. They think it's safe, and it creates a bubble. And so that dollar milkshake theory seems to be playing out. And uh, so that. Part of my portfolio of sitting on in US dollars is really starting to look good now. However, I think there's more to come and I'll trade that. But eventually, at a later stage, everyone will scramble into gold and silver. And so you do want to position yourself for that. And uh, when when silver and gold get belted down like this, this is where it just provides a, that, that opportunity. Uh, the market is, is providing... Providing, uh, providing it on on sale, it's on fire sale, and uh, you know I'm already loaded up, but you know I'll 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 get a few more, uh, more in the uh, mining and exploration space and the physical, because I'm literally I've got more physical than I've ever known, uh, that I've ever owned. So, yeah.
So what to do? Well, I saw a pastor uh, of, a, of a church do a sermon and he, he shared uh, these things. So I'm just sharing what he shared. And I thought, you know, there's some good advice there. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. Uh, he said, getting out of the cities. Uh, because if you have a look at it around the world where there's inflationary problems, where there's food shortages, you know, and when governments, you know, come in and, and can try to control their people, it's populated areas that are got the violence and, and, and the theft and you know what. So getting out of the cities, loading up on food supplies, learn how to grow your own food, seeds, fruits, nuts and vegetables, your own water supply, so make sure, you know, if you do move out, out of the city onto some land to, to, to grow your own stuff, that you've got your own water supply. So, you know, does the property come with a dam, creek, bore, uh, rainwater tanks? Um, is it an area that does get good rainfall? Uh, shelter, so, you know, if you do buy just land, well, you need some sort of shelter. Uh, do you buy a shed and live in a shed? Do you build a home do you build a cabin do you have one of those uh tiny homes or whatever uh so you know you need shelter security i'll let you guys uh work that one out um i've got to be careful what i say on this channel regarding security i think you know what i mean it uh yeah you might be investing in some lead uh and being in a community of like-minded people so obviously the pastor was talking about being around other uh, people of, of faith and uh, people that, that share similar views, uh, you know, of, of like-minded people where you can help one another, especially when the going gets tough. Now, I added another uh, line in here. And I think you should also, from an investment point of view, look at real assets. So if you haven't got physical gold or silver, you need some physical gold and silver because if the power grid goes down, we get a cyber attack, uh, whatnot. Well, how are you going to do some exchange? Uh, you, know, you may have to use gold or, or silver again to, to exchange. Uh, it's your insurance, that physical gold and silver. And, and cash, have a bit of cash. Uh, I've got a bit of cash uh, aside, physical cash, because maybe some stores uh, won't accept gold and silver because they don't understand it, uh, but they might accept some cash. And Hey, Gresham's Law, you might as well get rid of the, the rubbish stuff first, right? Uh, energy. Uh, energy is a big one. Uh, base metals, for all the reasons I've mentioned in other videos. And agriculture. Uh, not just agricultural land, but I look at, for my investments anyway in this sector, is more in the, uh, in the fertilizers, in the uh, farming equipment. And, you know, uh, you know, I heard the stories of uh, back in the gold rush, you know, the people that made the money were the ones that made the, uh, you know, the picks and, and all the equipment, not the uh, actual gold miners. So anyway, that's a list that I thought I'd share with you guys. Uh, you know, what do you guys think? Is there anything else that you would add to this list? Um, yeah, put your comments uh, and, and opinions in the comments below. And uh, if you like this video, guys, please hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, do so and hit that notification bell so you get all my videos. Anyway, guys, take care. Wish you all the best. I'll see you again on another episode of Finance Uncut.